Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic uh, will be angles in geometry. Uh, angles in the planning metry, which means angles on the plane. That's what we are considering. All right. Um, first of all, let's talk about the definition. Um, everybody knows basically how angles look like, but Let's just start from the very fundamentals, the definition. Uh, we all know what is a straight line and what is a ray, which is actually a half line. It starts with a certain point and then goes to infinity. Now, two rays which share the same beginning form an angle. Is it sufficient to define this particular angle? Well, actually not. Um, for obvious reasons, there are two different angles just here. One is from this to this, and another from this to this. Well, is that it? No. <laughs> there are actually four angles defined here, because we can always go in an opposite direction. So, as you see, just a picture of two different rays doesn't really define an angle. So, what we have to know is um, what's the first ray from which we start and what's the second ray where we finish. So, usually, if you have an angle and you are saying something like A O B, what it implies actually that you start from the A, which is O A ray, and then you go to uh, the ray O B. So from ray O A you go to O B because the letter A is first. All right. Now, what it means is that we should really wipe out this particular one and this particular one. So, we start either this direction or that direction, but we start from the ray OA and go to OB. Now, which direction we go? Okay. Here we need certain convention, and the convention is that the positive direction of movement is counterclockwise. Just by definition, there is nothing to basically talk about this. It's the definition of the positive direction of the angle. So, if we are talking about this, this angle is this one, not this one. Because this one goes counterclockwise, this one goes clockwise. So whenever we are dealing with notation of the angle, we have the first ray in the beginning, the second ray at the end, and direction from the first to the second is always counterclockwise. Okay, define that. Uh, now there is an interesting thing. Um, we have to measure these angles in some way. Now the first traditional, if you wish, measurements uh, of the angle is, is the following. Basically you can consider the angle from from one ray to another which coincides with itself, this angle, A O B, as zero, and the unit of measurement is degree, which is written as uh, degree of temperature, basically. So, 
the angle with coinciding uh, sides is basically by definition a zero degree. And if the same looking um, angle is basically the result of a full circle from here back to here. So just imagine that this particular OB is moving all the way out here and finally coincides with OA. Again, coincides. That's basically the same. Uh, the, the, that's basically the same angle from from the visual perspective. It looks as you know two rays coinciding with each other, but the whole movement around the whole circle is actually, um, by definition, defined as an angle of 360 degrees. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that something like half of this angle, if you go from here to here, so you go from OA to OB, which is stretched on the same line, which is basically half of the full circle. When this particular angle is equal to half of this. And obviously quarter, which is perpendicular, would be 90 degrees, etc. So this is how we measure the angle. And at the same time, you see that if you add 360 uh, to an angle, uh, it will be visually exactly the same thing. So angles which are measured by uh, the difference in 360 degrees are not distinguishable among themselves. So what you can say is that that angle in, let's say, 27 degrees is equal to or congruent, or whatever terminology you use, uh, 387 degrees. Uh, and in turn, equal to the angle of uh, 360 twice is 720, so it's 747 degrees. All right, so these angles are exactly the same from the visual perspective. Well, there is nothing wrong about this. That's the fact. There are periodic functions uh, which have exactly the same value for different values of arguments. So in this case, argument is the number of degrees, basically, if you wish. But the physical uh, angle, as you see it on the, on the plane, is the value of this function. And they're all the same. All right. So we finished with this particular type of measurement. Now let's talk about arithmetic. Uh, in the previous lecture about lines and segments, uh, I was talking about segment arithmetic, that we can add them, we can multiply by uh, natural numbers, we can divide by natural numbers, or we can multiply by rational and even irrational numbers. Um, so exactly the same thing exists with angles. What does it mean to add two different angles together? OK, let's say you have an angle AOB, and you have an angle COD. Now, what does it mean to add them together? Well, obviously, you have to have an angle DOF and some ray from the same uh, vertex O, call it G in such a way that angle DOG is congruent to angle COD, and angle GOF is congruent to angle AOB. That's what it means to add two angles together. Well, obviously, if angles are really very large, you might have an interesting, uh, uh, interesting 
picture of this. Well, consider the angle uh, AOB is obtuse. And angle COG is even bigger than that. So you have one uh, angle which is greater than 90 degrees, then another angle which is even greater than 270 degrees. And now what happens if you add them together? Well, let's consider the movement. So first, we draw the beginning rate. Then we have to add the first angle. So that would be something like this. Then we have to add another angle, like this. So it will be something like this. That would be our G. So the resulting angle will be this one. That's how it looks. So this particular resulting angle is smaller than this one, and definitely smaller than this one, so it looks like you add two uh, angles and you get the result which is smaller than the components. Well, with angles it happens, and it happens only because 360 degrees, the full circle, is some kind of a limit. So if you go over that limit, well, you basically count only what goes over 360 or 720 or whatever it is whenever you are representing uh, in the visual sense. So you can say that this particular angle is actually the result of this movement and this movement. But one full circle actually should be completely disregarded because uh, from the visual perspective, angles which are different by a full circle don't really look any different. So that's why we have such a peculiar situation with these two angles. Let me just take care of this picture so it looks kind of more interesting. So the sum of these two angles is equal to this angle. And well, that, that's, that's how it is, basically. All right, fine. So we are talking about addition. Now, obviously, we can talk about um, multiplication by integer numbers. And obviously, it means that if you have um, an angle, let's say AOB, and you want to multiply it by some integer number, let's say by 2, what it means, it actually means addition. It's AOB plus AOB twice. If this is any number, it will be as many uh, components in this sum. So it works actually the same way as with segments. So you can add uh, two different angles, you can multiply them by uh, integer number. Now um, you, you can do the reverse operations, subtractions and division. And obviously, as far as subtraction is concerned, If you have two angles, this one and this one, this is AOD and this is COD. Um, so how to subtract? Well, again, start from the array B. Have the first angle congruent to AOD, that's F. And now, instead of adding this angle 
into this direction, into positive direction, which is counterclockwise, you do clockwise into this direction. So it will be this end. So this one is equal to this one. But this is the positive, and this is the negative direction. So first you move into positive direction by the value of the first angle, and then you move to the negative direction by absolute value of the same angle. And whatever is left here, that's the result of a difference. Why? Because if you add them back together, this is G. So E, O, G is basically the difference between angle A, O, B and uh, C, O, G. Why? Because if you will add this to this, angle E, O, G plus angle C, O, G, E, O, G plus C, O, G, which is uh, congruent to G, O, F, that would give you the E, O, F, which is congruent to our original angle A, O, B. So that's how you verify that this is actually the difference. Subtraction is verified by uh, addition. Now, same thing with uh, division. If you have an angle and you would like to divide it by a uh, certain number, of, but by a certain natural number, what is angle AOB divided by, let's say, 3. Well, it means you have to find such an angle, COD, so this will be COD. In such, in such a way that if you will add to itself, multiply by 3, which is the reverse of the division, 3 times, you will get an angle congruent to our angle AOB. Now, let me repeat something which I um, have said uh, when I was explaining the arithmetic of segments. Um, defining sum of two angles or difference between them or res result of multiplication or division. Defining is one thing, but every definition must be correct in some way or another. Now, what's the correct definition of, let's say, sum of two different angles? Well, we have to prove that this new angle, which constitutes the sum of these two angles originally given to us, really exists. And no matter how you do it, you will have the same and unique result of this operation of addition of two different angles. So operation must be defined in such a way that uh, the result exists and unique. Now, um, my question is, let's say, let's talk about division, for instance. Now, I was saying that I have to find an angle which is, uh, if multiplied by 3, will give original. Uh, now, does it exist or not? Well, I have to prove it. And secondly, um, uh, is it unique? I mean, maybe there are two different angles which, if multiplied by itself three times, I mean, if added to itself three times, multiplied by, by natural number three, would give original number. What if there are two different angles, which means there are two different results of the operation of division? Both statements must be proven, existence and uniqueness of the operation. Otherwise, operation is poorly defined. Well, not defined, let's just be honest about it. Well, and um, it's not easy, by the way, to define these most important for any definition properties existence of the result of the operation and its uniqueness. But it can be done. The, the definition itself is, is, is quite obvious, but all these uh, proofs of existence and, uh, uh, and, and uniqueness are not really easy. 
they kind of go um, beyond the scope which I would like to address. Um, but in any way, you should understand that this is very important. Again, let me repeat, uniqueness and existence are very important for any kind of a definition. Otherwise, you will be defining something which does not exist, or something which exists in, in, in different incarnations, which is basically not a good thing in mathematics. All right, fine. So we've done that, we've done the operations, and uh, one more thing about how to measure the angle. So we were just talking about measurements in degrees when the full circle is basically defined as the uh, angle of 360 degrees and everything which is part of this full circle basically defined through the operation of uh, multiplication or division or whatever else. So, if you can say that, if you have angle AOB And you can say that this is basically uh, an angle of, uh, how should they specify it? Uh, let's say I put AOA, which means a full circle. Full circle. Times some number R. Well, just as an example. If it's something like this, it looks like, I don't know, 60 degrees or whatever, it means that 360 is multiplied by 1, 6, whatever the number is. Well, then the measurement is 360 times R, this angle. Because the measurement of the full circle is 360 degrees. So basically you can say that you have a unit of measurement, which is a very small angle, which, if multiplied by 360, will give the full circle, will give the full, full, full and whole angle. And this is the unit of measurement. And you can either start with this small one degree angle and then express our angle through this, or you can start with a full circle, maybe it's easier, it doesn't really matter, and multiply it by some multiplier. So either way, either you multiply this unit of measurement by some number to get the number of degrees, or you multiply this, which is expressed as 360 degrees, by a different number. In any way, whatever the result is, you have to get our angle AOB, and the measurement would be calculated as either, if you start in the full circle, then it's 360 times the multiplier, or if you start with this small angle, uh, let's call it x o y. So if you start it with a small angle, x o y times some measurement, some number s, um, then it will be 1 times s. So in any case, that's the measurement in degrees. Are there un uh, other measure measurements of the angles? Well, if you remember from the previous lecture about the segments, um, I, I mentioned that there are so many different measurements of the length of the segment, it's unbelievable. Well, with angles it's much simpler. There are only two different units of measurements which people usually use. One is degrees, and another is based on an interesting property. If you consider a circle, and the correspondence between the radius of the circle and the length uh, of the cir circumference, cir circumference of the circle. Um, uh, there is a known fact, basically, that circumference is equal to 2 pi r. r is a radius. pi is an irrational number, which is approximated as 3.14. Uh, so and so the length of the circumference is actually proportionate to to the radius. Now here is an interesting thing. What if we will take an angle which has radius equal to 
the lengths of this arch. Well, if you increase the size of the uh, of the circle, then what's interesting is that this length is increasing in exactly the same proportion as, as the radius. So if you take a smaller one, the radius is, will be, let's say, twice as small, and this length will be also uh, twice as small. So basically, if you take uh, this type of an angle, which, um, which cuts from the circumference an arch which has a length equal to the radius, then this angle will be exactly the same regardless of the circle. So, this type of a definition seems to be much more convenient in certain aspects of um, uh, uh, angle arithmetic, angle calculation, and equations, etc., etc. And we can actually measure any angle using this particular angle as a unit of measurement. And it's called, this uh, unit of measurement is called one radian. One radian. So this angle, which uh, cuts from the uh, circle an arch equal in length to the radius, is actually independent on the circle and it can be therefore used as, as a unit of measurement. We call it one radian. Now, if this is one radian, then how many radians are in the full circle? Well, let's just think about if the full circle is equal to 2 pi r circumference, and this particular length is equal to r, then if you divide one into another, you will get 2 pi. And this is basically the number of radians in the full circle. So whatever is 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. That's what's very important now. It's just a different unit of measurement, and we can measure angles in, in this unit as well as in some other units. Now, although it seems... Um, a little strange to have an irrational number as the um, measurement of a, a full circle. It just take my word for it that in many different aspects of mathematics, this seems to be as a more natural uh, unit of measurement, and uh, it's uh, basically mm, much more. Um, uh, my, my much widely, my, much wider used in, in mathematics for different reasons, um, we, which we will not discuss right now. Uh, but that, that's actually a true statement. Now, from this, from proportionality, you can say that 180 degrees is actually pi radians, and uh, let's say 60 degrees is what pi divided by three radians, etc. So, two different measurements, degrees and radians, are uh, the measurements which are used in, in mathematics. In common life, degrees are more prevalent, but in the mathematics, uh, especially in, 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 in high mathematics, um, which people are learning in like calculus, etc., then this measurement, the radian measurements of the, of the angles uh, are more prevalent because it's more convenient in many different um, cases. Well, that's it for uh, the angles. Uh, I would like to remind you that this lecture and notes for it can be found at unisor.com website, which actually presents a, like a course of um, school-level mathematics uh, more or less uh, logically arranged and it's also very um, helpful to those parents and supervisors uh, who would like to control the educational process uh, of their children and students um, because there is something which uh, 
uh, they can use as tests and exams, uh, scores, etc. Uh, there is some kind of a relationship between the supervisory activity of the parents or supervisors and, and educational process which they can control. So I strongly recommend to go to the website and, uh, and uh, basically investigate how to use it and, and, and use it. Uh, thanks very much.